Hello and welcome to Trenta, 30-something conversations with 30-somethings and the 30-something else. One of the highlights of my 20, 2019 was working for a national campaign in the midterm elections where I got to meet a group of people with whom I more or less share the same hopes and dreams for the Philippines. So I'm so honored to have with me tonight Bev, Huge, Jo, Luis, and Pia, all former civil servants, next, to share their thoughts mm -hmm. on keeping the faith for the Philippines. Hi, guys. Hi. 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 Hello. I think this is the biggest group we've had so far. So thanks again for your time. And I always begin by asking my guests for their ASL. But for this episode, <laughs> and just to give context, as I am my RC, yeah. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm my RC. I'm old school. Well, so aside from the ASL, old, right? oh, aside from the ASL, may I also ask for the years you were in government, and if you're only, if you're okay with it, the offices or agencies you worked for. So, who wants to start? Should we start with the most senior? <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> Go. Obvious, ba? Obvious, ba? <laughs> Louis, senior. Uh, no, <laughs> Sorry, my profanity then. You, God. Oh, I'm a boy. 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 I'm a I'm Turning 40 this year, yeah. So ASL sex, oh, male. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I live in San Juan. Kina ba nawa mga iba sa bigo? Yeah, I used to be with the. I used to work in the Senate and then with PMS for a while, and also with the Department of Tourism. That was my last government stint. So. So that was from total of nine years, from 2007 up to 2016. Wow. Okay. All right. Sino next senior? <laughs> Ako yata yun eh. Ayan. Hi, uh, Luis Abad, uh, male. Uh, I live in uh, BGC. So I work, I work in... Uh, age, age, age. Age. Uh, age uh, 33. Um... I know. Uh, uh, I worked for Senator Mar Rojas, 2008 to 2010, and then I worked at DOF, Department of Finance, 2010 to 2013. So five years now. All right. Next. Actually, di ko na alam sino yung. Oh yata. Okay. Joanne, I'm 31, female, bola permanent resident ko Bulacan. Next. Um, uh, <laughs> ano, per, ano, permanent or current. Uh, I worked in the Department of the Interior of the Government from 2010 to 2013, so that was three years. Yeah. Hi, I'm Bev. <laughs> Sorry. I'm Bev. Okay, age, I'm 31. I'm from Ortigas. Female. Okay, I work in the government for three, more than three years. Mm -hmm. I work at the presidential communications team of President Aquino. And I worked for a senator, a secretary afterwards. And then I worked for the campaign where I met you guys. Thankfully, <laughs> made my life easier and happier. So that's it. All right. I'm Pia. I'm 30, female in Quezon City. I was in the Department of Tourism with Huge for, I think, a year, about a year. Okay. All right. Thank you for giving your ASL++. Okay. My first question is, how did you end up working for a government? Was it by choice? Was it by chance? Anyone can start. <laughs> hmm. I think by chance, because my batch, actually, my in my batch when we graduated from college, that was 2009. 
we were all, they were uh, most of us were swept into the presidential campaign. Mm-hmm. And then I retained up to nung nanalo si President Aquino. Then ako, I was working then on a local campaign for my family. When my mom lost, by chance, I was invited by Sec. Jesse Robredo to join him. And like, when he invited me, it was a very, parang very temporary position. Parang he was very casual about it. Parang sabi niya, Joan, alam ko, wala akong ginagawa. Baka gusto mo akong tulungan. Um, and he, was, he, he called me like the day he was going to take his oath taking. He was going to start um, office. Like July, I remember, I remember because that was July 9. Eh. Hmm. And then, he sabi lang niya, walang job description or anything. He just told me, kita tayo sa DILG 7 AM, paliwanag ko anong gagawin mo. Tapos, <laughs> okay sir, I, I was supposed to work then for AIM. For the day before? Project. The day before yun? The, the, Bukas pa pasok ka na, gano'n? De, parang that was a Friday. Kasi Friday was taking. Weekend. Hmm. Tapos Monday, pasok na ako. And, um, tapos ako lang mag-isa yung in-invite pala niya. Akala ko may iba kaming kasama. Kasi yeah, for a month, I was the only staff na kasama, na bit-bit niya. And I was like struggling with the whole bureaucracy. Kasi hindi ko nga alam ano ibig sabihin ng undersecretary. Assistant secretary. <laughs> ano to? And like, there was a, like, I think, nakita ni sa Jesse na I was so overwhelmed by the first week. Because he had a lot of resumes of other people who were interested. Tapos he asked me already if I knew some <coughs> of these people. <coughs> Tapos yeah, sabi ko, yeah, sir, I know this. Yeah, kaya we had, in our, in our whole stint there for three years, our core team was only three. Um, I won't name them, but that was, the, he called them the OSEC management team. And that was the decision board of everything that reaches the secretary. Uh-huh. And yeah, I always say it's by chance, because Sec. Jesse calls us his volunteers. Wala kami security of tenure. <laughs> like, para every year, we always ask, ano, nandito pa ba tayo? Mm-hmm. But, you see, there was always a new issue that might, that comes up every year that threatens his position. Eh. Mm-hmm. So it was a fun three, fun and unpredictable volunteer work for, <laughs> for three years. Yes. Who wants to share next? Uh, Sige, okay, ako next. Uh, I graduated college 2007. That wasn't a very fun time to graduate. Uh, yun yung, I think, global financial crisis. Mm. There wasn't so many opportunities in the Philippines then. So I had a choice whether I wanted to work in a bank or do a year abroad in Paris. So I decided to spend one year in Paris. <laughs> Uh, wow. after graduation, yeah, no uh, it was uh, an exchange program of Ateneo that it was starting before. And then my my parents had a friend who had an apartment there. So, libre naman yung tuition, libre rin yung tirahan. So, I said, bakit ako magsasuffer sa Philippines? Uh, <laughs> yun, 2007, yeah. yung parang high TGMA. That's parang... Ang, wala, wala talagang masyadong choice for work. Unlike now, na ang dami pwedeng pagpilihan ng mga, ng mga bata. So, ayun, so I, I went to Paris hoping na to learn French and pursue like a master's degree. But that while I was there, yun din yung height ng Obama election mm-hmm. in the US. And parang contrast that with what was happening in the Philippines, parang I felt na uh, you know, things can really turn around quickly and, and why not be part of something like that in, in uh, back home. So after one year in Paris, I said, we na ako. And at that time, parang si, Sen- si Senator Marpa yung dati, uh, mm-hmm. parang he was gearing up to run for, for president. So I applied for his Senate office. Naalala ko si Yuji, eh. nandun pa si Yuji dun sa... <laughs> sa table niya nang nag-job interview ako. So senior na talaga siya. Mm-hmm. Oo, oh, boss na siya nun. Ano pa lang ako, parang insert. So, so yun. Yeah, so, Kaya so, hindi so, naman so, mukha, no? So, mine was, was uh, by choice, no? Na, mm-hmm. I, yung, I guess all the images, all the stories about yung Obama election, parang mo something na pushed me to do it. And then, eventually, history happened na Mm. Uh, si President Cory died, si Senator Noy Pinoy became the candidate, so eventually uh, worked in the campaign, and then nung nanalo, I was asked by si Secretary Purisima to join his team sa DOF. So mm. I stayed there for, for, for three years. 
Ngayon, think, inisip ko, parang bilis lang pala nun. Pero nung nangyayari, parang grabe ang tagal-tagal nyo. <laughs> Tatlong taon na yun. So, I left to pursue further studies. And then, uh, yun. So, that was the end of my five years stint from Senate to DOF. I think mine is sort of similar to Luisa's minus the one year in Paris. So I graduated 2011 when Pinoy had just won, and it was uh, I was part of the campaign also, but under, for vice press with um, Mar then, and um, all of the people or most of the people I met during the campaign started working for all these agencies and departments and governments. So it was something really that really interested me, as like when I graduated, I knew that I wanted to do that. Like so many of my batchmates were applying for like the usual companies and all mm-hmm. that and no one was really interested in pursuing um working for the government and i don't know it's so something that just always i knew i wanted to do mm-hmm. so there i applied with thankfully i knew someone who was working there which is huge and he interviewed yes, me talaga at, yung, ano, eh, common thread. Uh, the boss talaga si huge no? oh, parang boss yung peg niya talaga eh. So there, and then I I worked in the OT for about a year until some family issues popped up. But it was really a great experience, and I do it all, all over again. Oh, Amina ba? Okay, Amina man, I was a Jerry Rojas scholar, and then parang I graduated two thousand nine, so I got an email parang asking for different job applicants, etc. I just sent my um, resume and then they called me. So, um, I studied in Cebu but my family is in Leyte. So, parang I flew to Manila for the interview and I got accepted and then parang gusto nila mag-start na ako agad. I said, kailangan ko pa ng vacation <laughs> from graduation. <laughs> so, I spent two weeks break lang in Leyte and then I came to Manila. I moved here so I've been here now for 11 years. Anyway, after that, I worked for the campaign of Senator Mar for the vice president. And then after um, I got recruited to the office of the communication secretary. That time, it was Sec. Edwin Lacherda. And then eventually, they, add, I, they added an office. So I was moved to um, Secretary Ricky Caranda. So um, we were there for three years, more than three years. And then I got recruited again for the campaign of Senator Mar. And then from there, I've met a lot of people. Parang I had a chance to make a difference from baby steps. And then, minsan makakareceive ka ng kung ano-anong request na parang mundane things for you or mm-hmm. for me. But then for other people, parang it's a matter of life and death for them. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you get to receive letters na um, from jail. So, parang to condone um, yung ano nila, sentences, etc. Or kulang ng pamasahe or kulang ng pang doktor, pang check up ng uh, anak. Uh, things like those. And then, we met a lot of people because we traveled a lot to do road shows. So, parang makikita mo yung mga um, things na kailangan ng um, communities uh, around the Philippines. So, I'm fruitful naman. Actually, it was the most purposeful <laughs> thing na nangyari. Mm-hmm. I mean, I met, I met a lot, lot of people. And then, looking back now, kasi I work na in the private sector. Mm-hmm. So, sa private sector kasi parang yung buhay, chill lang. You're just waiting <laughs> for things to happen. But in the government, things are happening <laughs> like that <laughs> and right. <laughs> and I you can control. Yeah, parang can we take a break? Ganon. But, <laughs> like, now, parang, okay, chill lang ako. Parang, two separate worlds. Hmm. Pero, masaya naman. Nung 2009, Bev, comms ka rin, di ba? Yes. Sa comms team ka, di ba? Yes. <laughs> Naalala ko pa si Bev, eh, nung, ano, nung 2010 campaign, neneng-nene pa yan si Bev. Eh. Oh, <laughs> Payat pa ako. Binubuli no? pa siya, eh. Ngayon, siya na nang bubuli. Siya na bubuli. Napaka-among two pa yan eh, si Bev. Eh. Ang, ang boss niyan dati, si, ano, si Danny Gozo, Ram- tapos si Rami si Diaz. Rami, di ba? Di ba, you were the only girl in that big room, of course. Yes. Hmm. Parang apo ka na nga ni Rami, eh. Yeah, kaya spoiled. <laughs> hey. 
Naalala ko lang, ipagkulitan pa ako kay Bev dati sa mga comms, ano eh. Comms, comms, comms request, di ba? Speech, yeah. PR. Yeah, and, and then marami kang mamimit na media. Some of them are nice and hardworking. And some of them are just nah. how shall. <laughs> Uh, hindi ABS-CBN yun. No, not ABS-CBN. <laughs> But I can name some <laughs> who are... Never mind. Si Boss Huge na daw. Ay, ako na ba? Ako by choice. Uh, eto, alam ni alam ni Paige. Parehas kami ng law firm na pinanggalingan eh. So, I, I used to be with a law firm before. At some point doing law firm life, I realized, what am I doing? Uh, it's, it's, it's not fulfilling. It's, it's empty. It's empty. So I, I I decided to resign from the law firm work and uh, decided to join government. I I did a walk-in application. Uh, I remember I I I I applied with two senators at that time. At that time, si Chief Escudero. Na kwento ko na masaya. Oh Grabe, life-changing yun yun siya. I didn't know yeah. you. Oh my God, oh, we wouldn't oh. have been friends. Ay, oh my God, thank God. Thank God. As in, nag walk-in application lang ako at that time. So I I, oh. I applied. Eh, si Chase noon, medyo mabango pa yung pangalan eh. ba? Diba? I mean, mm, yeah, yeah. he was the young senator who... Yeah. I, no, no. He was the young congressman. Congressman. Oh, he was very vocal about so many issues. Tapos, mm-hmm. uh, di ba may affiliation din siya sa Picasso before? Yeah. Page? Remember? Mm-hmm. Wala pa si Hart noon. Uh, oh, <laughs> wala pa si... Wala pa ni Jericho eh. Wala yeah. pa ni Jericho. <laughs> Kaya, nag-apply ako. Oh, John Pratt. Ba, John Pratt pa nga yan. John Pratt pa. Hindi. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> John Prats nga ba? Tama, John Prats before si Jericho. Tama, tama. John Prats dated sa showbiz. So yan, I applied kay Cheese. Tapos nag-apply ako kay, ano, kay Senator Marinon. Tapos, uh, I, I, I still remembered, uh, ito si Boss Blas, si Attorney Blas yung tumawag sa akin for the interview. <laughs> so yan, that, that started my government, ano, government work. So... Thankfully, I got in. So, I did a lot of... Uh, I, I met Luis there. So, si Luis, to, totoy na totoy na si Luis. <laughs> I think... <laughs> Kagagaling-galing yung nata ni Luis uh, no, 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 from Paris. Eh. No, I think it was also uh, 2007. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I did Senate work and I joined the campaign team, the vice presidential campaign team. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was originally a presidential run became a vice presidential run. And uh, after 2010, I kind of got disillusioned. So I went back to the private sector. But then, uh, as what Pia said, and, and daming gusto manilbihan sa gobyerno. Eh. A lot of people, young people, wanted to work for the Aquino administration, want to be part of the change, got swept into the dynamics of being part of building something. So I joined PMS upon the invitation of uh, Ate, uh, the sister of uh, Luis, the Seculia. So I joined PMS for six months, and then came the invitation from the late uh, Secretary Moni Menes to join him at the Department of Tourism, and that was already 2011. So and there, and uh, the, the 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 selling point to me by Secmon at that time was uh, 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 join me in becoming part of something that we will build. So um. okay, I mean. He was a he was such a good salesman. He actually promised me twenty things, but uh, he, he 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 ended up giving only one. But <laughs> worth it, naman. But worth it, naman. It turns out that I got a hundred things more. Kinuha ni Ren yung iba. And so so I I I spent the next uh, six years uh, until 2016 with the Department of Tourism, and again the presidential run of. Uh, then Senator and Secretary Morojas. So, yeah, so many battles, so many fights. So, yeah, best nine years of my life. <laughs> What's a misconception you had prior to working for government? And did that change after you actually experienced it for yourself? Misconception that things are easy to do <laughs> as long as you're focused on it but no there are many people parang in government kasi like yung bureaucracy as in like every step of the way sometimes my challenges mm. it's not just the system also sometimes it's the people kasi 
di ba, in government, like every three years, every six <clears throat> years, nagpapalit. And mm. some people are there for a lo- the longest time and then they're not, parang in, they treat you as, ah, you'll just be here for a short period of time. Mm. Parang mas, parang you have to follow my system. But sometimes kasi, depende rin sa boss mo, kung parang gaano siya ka-dedicated, how to, parang do the changes, the small changes mm-hmm. um, parang within the office. So, that's it for me. Ako. Go you. Ako yung number one misconception was we thought we could change everything in just a short period of time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, somewhat similar to what uh, Bev said. So, but, you 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 go in there. You really think that you can change everything overnight. So, but yeah, such is not the case. So that's one misconception. You cannot really. You can just plant the seeds of change, and hopefully, it will turn out to something really good in the future. But uh, yeah, the, the the work will never really end. Eh? I mean, there's so there's such a huge work that you cannot totally overhaul everything and daming bad habits eh. and daming uh-huh. and daming entanglement eh, if, if you get what i mean so there, there's a lot of uh untangling that you would have to do a lot of a band uh, unbundling so that you can fix the broken pieces the broken system uh, yeah I, I think that was one big misconception and uh we all thought that we could and uh yeah and that was a bit uh uh, 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 to now, for me, that's the that's a bit of the dissolution there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. I'm ako yung kay huge. Siguro kasi kami, when we started in office, we always knew that we could be out anytime. So we mm-hmm. had a very level of expectation. Mm-hmm. Na, parang sa amin, from the from the first time I started, first day, parang yung guidance sa akin ni si Jesse was, um, Joan hat ng gagawin natin dito. Uh, dapat yung pwedeng pag iniwan natin hindi na kayang isara parang yung example niya parati our landmark policy was the full disclosure policy he said kaya ko pinupush yung full disclosure kasi pag ang mga tao na sanay na may impormasyong nakalatag sa kanila pag sinara mo hindi din mabuksan mm. so parang that was always our guiding framework now we always just start a system hoping kaya even our our office was very lean Kasi what we wanted was a system para i para i ano mo i i para sa start up na gagawin ng OSEC ibababa sa baba in the hopes that the bureaucracy will absorb it. So that was a parang for me that was a very helpful thing when I started. I was very disillusioned when I started. Parang pagkaiba kami ni huge kasi I just started I came from a very tiring and very draining campaign, very personal. Mm. So Yung DILG experience ko, that was like my, uh, okay, it was about regaining hope again. And regaining hope because I had a principal who was very hopeful. So yun yung first. And yung second, that whole experience, I gained a tremendous respect for the civil, the, the civil servant. Because mm-hmm. um, I, I had no idea how a government worked and I was always very grateful. But every step of the way, I would always ask the undersecretary, not just the undersecretary, but even an admin assistant. They're very helpful. I ko, ate, paano to gawin? Ate, paano to gawin? And I think they appreciated it na, I, na we admitted na hindi namin alam. And yung napansin namin, nung nagtatanong kami, naging even when Sec. Like Jesse died, I love them so much kasi they, parang they made sure na we were protected. And even up to now, if nag message sila sa Facebook and if I have a question about something technical about local government, they were just, madal lang sila. So, those are my, yeah, two biggest gifts that I got from government. Pia, mauna ka na wala akong maisip. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, off top of my head, I would agree with Bev and Huge thinking that, I mean, like, I came in super hopeful, you know, I won. This is like the hope the Philippines was waiting for, like our version of Obama. So I was like thinking, I mean, it's obvious to say that I was thinking things would work. And when you get there, you have to deal with the bureaucracy and all the red tape and all that. But 
I also left knowing and meeting so many people that are genuinely working in the service of the Filipino. And that's, I guess, the opposite of the first mis- um, misconception that I had was mm-hmm. that because um, I, I, I kind of grew up always um, interested in like current events and all that. And so for me, people who worked in the government, there were a lot of bad people. I'm not, not to say that all were bad, but there were a lot of bad people um, as I grew up. And meeting all these people who have worked there all their lives and mm-hmm. committed their lives towards service, it was something really refreshing. To, to realize and to um, get to know. So I, I guess that's nice. Siguro, since a lot has been said, parang, uh, uh, maybe one misconception that other people have of government is that it's a very, um, you know, di ba, yung, yung, di ba may meme nga na kumalat na pag government office yung nagchichika-chika lang siya. Namasunit. Ang sugit ng mga tao. Lunch break. Uh, haba na lunch break. Pero sa totoo lang, sobrang nakakapagod mag-work sa government. And I think for, I think perfect talaga yung to start your work life or your career as in government. Kasi ang dami mo matututunan na malamang uh, some people take for granted in terms of values, in terms also of parang systems, concepts, theories, sobrang may expose ka in a way na hindi ka may expose sa isang company and may expose ka rin sa sobrang daming kinds of people and and I think yun yung okay experience kasi like if you work in a company, medyo homogeneous, medyo same hmm. yung mold ng mga mak- makakahalubilo mo eh. Pero pag nasa government ka, sobrang iba-iba. Like, in my case, I worked mm-hmm. sa DOF. Yung mga, mga naka-interact ko noon was mga expat working in credit rating companies, bankers. Pero nandiyan din yung mga customs uh, employees na nag-aabang ng appointment nila sa pintuan mm-hmm. na may pitong bodyguard. So, talagang I think uh, I highly encourage people to to try it out and 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 get out of the usual jobs that uh, fresh grads often pursue. But but I guess one problem lang talaga is the kind of work, the kind of experience you have is very dependent on, on the leadership yeah. that, that the agency has and also the yeah. the country has. So maybe under the day, they're not the best time to, to join government. <laughs> Baka totoo yung meme na wala yung tao sa opisina. <laughs> Kasi yung common sa atin lahat, we all had good bosses to work with eh, yeah. and work for. Yes. And that that's always the important thing eh. Yeah. Because if you don't have a good boss or a good leader or a good mentor, wala. Well, You'll just fall you your way, yeah. in the cracks of the bureaucracy. Sobrang saktong segue yan sa next question ko. I think you have talked about this already. Your head. Kinarm mo siya na facilitate. Also na do you make a conscious effort to work for or with someone whose values align with yours? Or does it matter that you share the same values with your principal or your boss? And as a follow-up na rin, were you ever in a position that this, where this wasn't the case? And how did you deal with it? Was there ever a time that you wanted to walk away? parang yung tama ni Araw-araw, mag-resign na yan eh. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> naman because of that. Mga, yeah, ang bait kayo ng mga boss ko. <laughs> sige, like, sige, ako. Ako oh, mag-resign na doon sa kanyang last, last time. Um, ako, for me, napaka, ano ako, parang in every, especially with regard to work, no? Parang, mission is, is very, that's very important to me. Um, kahit na uh, whether in the comp- in a private sector or in, in, in government, parang for me, what really motivated me to you know wake up at 5 a.m. and then grab it's so intense work schedule nung, nung nasa government ako kasi parang kailangan gising ka na 
pag uh, nag bubanat na si Noel de Castro sa umaga. <laughs> Tapos syempre sa gabi, mag uh, yung briefer for the next day, pagpupuyatan mo so parang 5 to 12 ganyan. And then Saturday yung pasok ako para to make sure na yung tambak ng mga papel sa sa office ko hindi ma-delay kasi what if di ba may isa dyan na parang magiging problema two weeks from now kung hindi ko siya ma mm-hmm. anyway so parang all of that work won't make sense kung hindi ako naniniwala dun sa dun sa ginagawa ko so for me very important and and very crucial yun and kaya kahit nag mag-try kang mag mag private sector parang laging hinahanap mo pa rin na parang mm-hmm. ano ba yung sense ng bat natin ginagawa to so for me yeah very, very important luckily for me parang i haven't had the problem of uh, being entangled with bosses na put put our office in in compromising situations and i, I guess part of my discipline is really not getting to that point na parang may may mga warning signs naman yan eh yeah. and then uh you just have to make sure na before before it becomes difficult to say no parang you say no early on pa lang me <laughs> who wants to go next <laughs> may rapi edit yung side so, <laughs> <laughs> ano na Sa akin yung first question, on the first question, ako, I feel like, cause he, my, for, my job in the government, siya yung official boss ko eh. So I feel like I was very spoiled. Because he was boss slash mentor slash father to me. Hmm. And when, and so, kaya, the framework that I op- I've been operating on since now is to always just look for someone like that in whatever work environment I'm in. Which is very difficult, I must hmm. say. Because, like, when I left government and I started applying for firms, I actually asked the, the interviewing partners explicitly na how, what if I'm placed in a situation that will ask me to question what I believe in? How would the firm help me or ha- help me process that? Because like, I wouldn't want to go to within, in a firm that would put me in a situation na mababago kung sino ako. So that was a, that stuck with me. And I don't know how sustainable that is. Because <laughs> up now, I have the luxury to choose where I want to work, if I want to leave at work, because I still largely dependent with my parents. <laughs> but I'm sure at some point, baka ha, hindi siya mangyari. And the second question mo, Paige? May second question, Paige. Were you, you ever in a that? position where ah, you yeah. didn't align with your boss? Yung issue na yun, um, again, I was very spoiled. Because... Um, my boss was very clear na ang sabi niya, ang guidance na, kasi as I mentioned, we were three in a team, which he calls the Aussie management team. His guidance always was, if it's black or white, decide on your own. Hindi ako magagalit sa inyo. Basta panindigan mo. But if it's gray, you consult among yourselves. And if you decide on something, ask. We, differ, we, we discuss with him and then we will decide or we will, we will decide as a team. Mm-hmm. And so every time we're faced with something, and there was a lot of times like that, because DILG is a very, parang, ang daming gray area dun eh, na ang daming, biglang, uy, may ganito pala, parang nalo na pag sa PNP or sa BFP, sa Bureau of Fire, where corruption appears to be very embedded. So that was, since that was the guiding principle, that was the framework you operated in, that was how we handled it. But at some point also during that whole three years, we, we also had to ask ourselves, because we had to self-police ourselves, like, Parang may point also that we somehow like made decisions. So parang medyo nag towards dark gray or something. And we had to process each other. So I think that was ang pinaka- Doon yung natutunan ko na it's always good to have a team. That you may kabatuhan ka. And that was because that was how our principal wanted it. That was the framework that we were operating on. Okay, me naman. I think super swerte ako sa bosses ko. Char. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm swerte because um parang yung values naman and yung um priorities nila aligned sa what parang what I see for the Philippines, etc. And then um lagi silang you they encourage you for me 
to our Sekmar Rojas and Sekiki Karandang. They always, example, if there's a certain issue and I feel so strongly against or parang, why do you have to do this? Why do you have to do that? Parang, they welcome your opinion. They encourage you to speak out. Hindi yung parang ako sundin mo because um, I'm the boss. They're not like that. Mm. Parang misconception lang kasi medyo mga ingro sila. <laughs> and parang they're in the firm. <laughs> <laughs> yun yung aura nila lagi. But um, they really ask you, parang, what do you think? Parang, um, they value your opinion. So, so when I'm with with other people, parang, parang I'm also encouraged to speak to speak out. So, kung may certain issues na, parang, I feel so strongly, I speak out. Mm. Also, um, they're disciplined. So, dahil disciplined sila and they're very detailed detail oriented parang nadidisciplina din ako to review whatever i show them so i don't know now sa mga staff in government if they have CSWs <laughs> but nung time namin hindi pwedeng pwede lang pwede na yan nung time namin kailangan ni review mo yan kailangan mo back up mo siya kailangan mo justify mo sa boss mo pa lang kailangan mo justify mo bago umabot yung briefer sa office of the president and then um during our time also, we um, um, talk to the media a lot. So, there are media people who are rude. Some people are nice naman, but some, some media practitioners are just parang, sometimes they're not objective. Sometimes parang may mga hidden agenda, certain questions. And also, parang some of them, kung hindi pa alam ng ibang tao, some of them are really corrupt. <laughs> so, or under the peril of some people, you will know, depending on the content that they, um, halimbawa, like, for a whole week, like, every day, nandun yung pangalan ng politiko. For a whole week, nandun yung issue na gustong i-advance ng politiko. Parang, so, sometimes, parang, disillusion ka. Because, um, I graduated, um, MASCOM, MASCOM yung course ko nung college. And then, parang makikita mo, parang, shucks, ganito ba talaga? Parang, may media ba talaga nagpapabayad? But yeah, in reality, yes, meron. And sometimes, yung bosses mo yung mag, I mean, mag na, yes, may mga ganyang tao, and we don't have to deal with them. Mm-hmm. And if we deal with them, man, as in like, very ano lang, yes or no, or as long as hindi tayo mag, I mean, we will not follow their system. Para ano lang tayo, let's just be fair to everyone. Ganun, ganun so, I don't know sa mga future government workers na I hope um, tibayan nyo lang yung loob nyo because there are really people na not aligned with your values. Not just your bosses or the people mm-hmm. you, work, you work with. Sometimes, mamimit mo lang sila randomly na matitest din yung patience mo. So, like, I mean, you know yourself naman. So, you have to just value and to show what kind of person you really are. Huge. P? Aaron J. Mo. Ano ba? Okay. Um, I think the part of why I joined or wanted to join government was really Pinoy. I mean, the... I felt like we aligned on so many levels of how we wanted to see the Philippines. And not just him, but his cabinet as well. And that I knew that if I wanted to work in government, it wasn't going to be under um, a politician or a senator or a congressman. It was, I really wanted to work under this team of people that shared the same vision as I did. And um, luckily enough, I I found myself in Sekmon's um, office, and I always thought to myself I'd only join government if if I was under a good boss. Again, it was my first job, so more than a boss, I was also looking for a mentor and someone to really bring me into the the real world. So um, I guess I chose to some extent. Like I knew I wanted to work for him. And luckily in life, I've also not been under someone I didn't agree with or like to, the, to my core I didn't agree with. And 
I mean, there are many things that you don't agree with your boss. And like what Bev said, I was also lucky that Sekmon um, encouraged dialogue and encouraged um, speaking up. But our, our lunches were always so animated because we, we talked about like everything under the sun from serious um, concerns to work-related to what's trending on YouTube. So like he was really someone who, I mean, anything you can talk to him about. So I was really lucky. And after government working in the corporate world, I also was lucky that my bosses, I haven't had a boss that I have disagreed with to my, I mean, my values disagreed with. I think it's hard to work for someone you don't agree with. I mean, your core values don't agree with. Like, why will you go to work? I mean, it just doesn't make sense. True. I guess we're right in Thailand and we can choose. You know, yeah. Some people yeah. Have, yeah. have the job. Yeah. And super, the super okay, lucky. Diba? I'm sure many people can. Mm-hmm. Or many people... Are, there are also many people who don't want to, like, a job to job. And that's fine. You know? I don't think... I can live with myself if I didn't agree with the person I was working for. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's enough. Uh, to PS point, I think that's also the reason why I never saw myself as staying for the longest time in government because I had to believe in the leader that I was working with and for. Because otherwise, I mean, if I were... if. If I were a career public servant, and I can just imagine, you know, president after president. I mean, good if you're under a good president, but if you're not, hello, <laughs> diba? that's a nightmare. But yeah, I think it's important that you believe in the principal. Ako, I've been blessed that I've been able to work with people I strongly believed in. Uh, si Senator Mar, and then si... Secretary Julia, and then si Secretary Moni Menes. I mean, those are three uh, really, really good public servants. Eh? They're, they're, they're very good civil servants. They, they lead all, they, all of them lead by example. So, so boss side, walang problema. Sa principal side, walang problema. However, kung ang babatayan natin ng mga boss ay ang Filipino people, hmm. yun ang frustrating part. <laughs> That for me was the most frustrating. If we follow by Pinoy's uh, mantra before that, uh, "Kayo ang Bosco," then the <clears throat> Filipino Filipino people are such thankless bosses to work for. Parang it's a it's a they're a Sorry to say this, uh, but you know sometimes in government we get so because you're so. Uh, buried with work already. You're so tired. You're so frustrated. You're you, but you just have to keep on going. As what uh, Louis said earlier, you just have to do it. Eh? But you, it's 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 a thankless job. It's a thankless job. And sometimes you get bashed. <laughs> you get bashed. And and you know, so, so the, sometimes the the Filipino people they can be su- such an ingrat sense of uh, men and women. <laughs> <laughs> if you get what I mean, so so that's a, that's really the frustrating part, and because of that, because of that, you, know, you 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 sacrifice so much of your personal time, you sacrifice so much of your family time, you even sacrifice well. That's why during the time of Pinoy, I think a lot of us in, experience uh, unexplained poverty. <laughs> 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 and and that was not only with the staff level, right? Even with the secretaries, because even the secretaries under the 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 presidency of Pinoy, they, they all sacrifice so much of themselves to be part of something big, something great. So and 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 sabi nga ni Beb, bash. You know, you do you do all these sacrifices, and then you 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 get. Uh, well, sasabihin naman ng mga tao, eh, trabaho niyo yan, eh. Yan. Yeah. Yeah. Oo nga naman. Yeah. Totoo nga naman. Ginusto niyo. Eh, ginusto naman nga. <laughs> Totoo naman talaga. Ginusto natin. So, okay. Sige. So, so, you just have to do it for a cause greater than the people that you are serving. And always a cause greater than yourself. So, but yes, because of that, uh, ako, I can tell you right now, there were so many times that I've almost walked away. So many times. And I almost did, 2010. So, eh, 
wala eh. Nadala uli dun sa wave ng mga, uy, kailangan we have to do something. Kailangan we have to help Pinoy and make it successful. And you know, this is the this is it. We can change the, this would be the turning corner for the government, etc. And that again, by the way, is also the frustrating part. Ah. Because after 2016, all the things that we've worked for, diba? DOF, DILG, DOT, <laughs> look at where they are now. <laughs> Oh my. We're not saying it's that bad. I mean, I, uh, thankfully, DOT, okay, okay pa. Uh, there are many... <laughs> 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 no, but, uh, but, but at least the second secretary that changed the first one after the Pina administration. Anyway. But, you know, that's the, that, that was a very frustrating part. And for that alone, I, I, I walked away so many times already. But again... Uh, the principals would always remind us, oh, no, no, laban lang. You just, you just have to do it. Uh, you don't expect anything. You don't expect a thank you. You don't expect a, a reward. You know, you just, you just do it because it's the right thing to do. It's, mm -hmm. it's in our DNA. It's what we believe in. It's in our principles. It's our philosophy. So you don't, you don't, you don't do it because you want uh, accolades. You don't do it because you you want to enrich yourself. You don't do it because you 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 seek to expand your network. You you don't you don't do it for yourself. And I I remember someone telling me in government, and this is where I'll probably end. When when you do when you do something, you're actually doing it for yourself. You're actually doing it for yourself. You do it because you want to. You do it because it fills you. You do it because you find joy in it. You 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 find it fulfilling. Hence, you don't you don't expect gratitude. Just mm -hmm. be grateful that you were given the privilege to serve. So, and that kept me staying. That kept me fighting with all these good people right here. <laughs> and it's been a good fight. It's been a good fight. And uh, yeah, for that alone, the government experience is thankless. But priceless as well and i think it's the most valuable experience that anyone could ever gain in life uh, as uh, as their rent here on earth so to speak there yeah my question my next question would be despite government work being a thankless job what naman was was the one thing you were most proud of or your proudest moment during your stint in government. Hmm. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay, go huge. Oh, sige. Marami. In the Senate, uh, one minimum wage. No, the the no, we, we took out the tax, the income tax for minimum wage earners. I remember I, I worked with Luis with this also. He did the numbers. So we took out the tax for minimum wage law, and that was the bill that uh, that Senator Moore filed. And we were part also of the MOA AD. We had the MOA, the the Memorandum of Agreement on the Ancestral Domain, that was supposed to give away Mindanao or at least a, a large chunk of Mindanao to 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 the MILF and to the Muslim groups. But again, it was unconstitutional. So I, I, mm -hmm. it was a one, 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 one big uh, project that I was a part of also. So many. Also, pre-need. It, it was a losing battle against pre-need companies. But wow, that was the first time that I was really exposed to the people who bought plants, who invested savings that all went away that they don't know what to do anymore but yeah so many and um, of course the last one the, the biggest the single most important project that uh, I share this with Pia that we were all a part of was the it's more fun in the Philippines and uh, we were the people behind the it's more fun and I would actually tell my students this and they I, 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 I despite my being a lawyer and uh, all my other credentials whenever I say it's more fun it's when I get the most applause parang mo talaga sir kayo yung ano oh na kaisip nun <laughs> and we were the we were the hard working people behind it. We did not think of the line. I would I would I would tell people that. We would we did not think of the slogan. We did not come up with the 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 the, the banner, the logo, etc. Yeah. But 
we were the people, we were the back people working to make sure that it worked hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that's my last uh, major accomplishment for government. Yeah. Um, to add to you, just obviously like the it's more fun campaign, but for me, like. I remember the first time we successfully awarded a bidding and mm-hmm. that was to produce the ads for It's More Fun. And what made it feel so fulfilling was that I knew in my heart that there was no corruption and that every peso that each person, each tax paying person's money that was put into this budget was going to be put to good use. Mm-hmm. And um, I think we were we asked for additional budget to like realign the media plan. And Sekmon, who who did come from the private sector and who was like a specialist in media, he what he did was he took the budget away from all our foreign offices and he aligned it from one media agency. And I remember going to the to the pre bid conference and I was just thinking like this is so small in theory but we're gonna save so much money by doing this and it just clicked me clicked that moment that if you have good people in office then your hard-earned tax hard-earned tax will be put to good use and that always like stuck with me because at, at the end of the day Sakman always said it's not our money so we have to make sure it's being put to good use Uh, okay, ako na lang, para. <laughs> Me naman, our office, since we handle media, I'm proud to say that we never pay, we never paid a single media person while we were there. Also, unlike now, we are, unlike the people now, <laughs> we are factual. <laughs> <laughs> and we are honest. I mean, kapag, I mean, kapag, kahit binabash, I mean, kahit alam ng mga boss na mababash sila on whatever they say, at least they they try to be honest as much as possible. As in like, alam nilang yung media mismo yung sasabihin na, pwede mo namang i-angulo na ganito. But, our bosses kasi, parang, eh, ganun talaga. That's, that's how it is. So, parang they're honest as, Oh, nag hmm. Ako. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Medyo malabo pang magawa. <laughs> <laughs> Nakatap. Yeah. So, parang, just be honest. And then, um, um, what else ba? Um, we started the official gazette. Hmm. For, um, lahat ng, um, proclamations, announcements, news uh, of the executive office. It's uploaded there, so people can just easily um, access information. During our time, I think, na pasa yung FOI. Mm-hmm. Encourage government agencies to contribute to the site also. So, kung may good news sila, um, important announcements, they can use it. Um, I don't know if you will remember, but during Pinoy's time also, um, doon nagsimula yung mga accounts ng MMDA. Um, PNP, the other offices. So, parang dun nag-start yung uh, people can easily contact the agencies by mm-hmm. just etc. Um, during our time also, kapag may bagyo, um, we use the hashtags um, efficiently. So, kung rescue ops, kung rescue ka, so, kung ikaw ay taga Marikina, kailangan ng rescue, you just use the hashtag um, rescue PH. Kapag kailangan mo ng um, relief goods kasi um, hindi ka maabot or parang it's impossible for you to buy. So, um, may hashtag kami, I think, relief ops at that time. So, lahat no na channel to uh, DSWD's uh, database. So, parang at that time, there was a system. I, I don't know kung pinagpatuloy siya up to now, but during our time, may ganun. Gusto ko yung hashtag um, back to normal, di ba? Yeah. Yung bag- <laughs> No, on may meron kami sa office kasi maraming creative people. So, yung project na yon, it's about may mga pothole sa daan, especially sa National High Highway. Yung pagaling bagyo. 
After the uh, bagyo. Uh, uh, maraming pothole. So, yung project was DPWH will mobilize people and para matakpan yon. But, kailangan namin ng mga tao na magre-report about it. So, may pa-contest sa office. Ang pinaka-creative na gagawa ng <laughs> tag para maingan yung tao na mag-report ay manan... I, I forgot anong gift check yata from our boss. So, ang nanalong hashtag ay Lubak to Normal. <laughs> So, ang owner nun ay si Ali. If you, if you know him, siya na yung owner ng Linya Linya PH. <laughs> so, ganun ka, ano. Yeah, the shirt. So, yun yung mga, maraming creative people and young people in the office. So, parang mabilis lang patakbuhin. Actually, because I think yung average age namin nun sa office, yung matatanda, yung matatanda that time, 45 to 48. Tapos yung mga bata, yung iba, um, I think, yung iba fresh grads, yung iba naman, parang 28, 29. So, parang mabilis lang mag-mobilize, honest, and they understand technology. So, parang it's easy for us to communicate. Like if, like ngayon, kung walang pasok or lockdown or may bagyo, if example, hindi kami makakapasok sa office, we can work from home. So, mm-hmm. yung setup na to, it will work at that time also if if mangyayari man siya. So, and what my bosses always say before, um, what are we in service for? So, you always, every day kapag papasok, kaisipin mo, okay, what positive thing could I do today mm-hmm. na can help other people? It's not what are we in power for, but what are we in service for? So, marami kang mamimit na tao na service din talaga yung priority. So, That's what I'm thankful for. Kasi marami talagang gusto lang talaga magtrabaho to be of service. Kasi yun yung passion nila. Amen. Sa akin, siguro in terms of policy, three. Pero yung last two, A for effort. Para kung bibigyan mo kami ng grade, C lang yun. Yung first one, which was our landmark policy for the whole three years, was the full disclosure policy and the seal of Godowski bid. Parang yun, makikita mo na first time in the history of JLG that the Secretary of the Interior cared about local government. Because it was the first time na the SILG focused on the local government operating under the framework that the local government, once you fix local government, the interior part will follow. The interior meaning police, BJMP, BFP, di ba? And I'm so proud of that because it became a law also. And even when we sat down into office, like there were a lot of mayors who were so proud of the seal that they got. Or, you know, parang it's a pat on the back. And it's a, it's a symbolism of how national government should relate to local government, respecting local government. You don't control them. You give them the power to act on their own. And hopefully, you give them the incentive. They do the right thing because they were elected. And pag maayos ka, national government, all the projects should, I mean, you prioritize the project based on certain standards. Hindi siya dapat um, based on favoritism or political um, affiliation. Yung sa ito ng third, kaya kasi nabing C lang kami because I think it didn't work. <laughs> I say that because the second and third would be, we were, the whole three years, we were so focused as a special project on the ARMM reforms and the informal settler reforms. ARMM, di ba, naging law siya with the Bangsamoro law. Pero parang now, like, I was talking to a former undersecretary. Nagkasabay kami in the airport in January. We were talking for three hours. And he's now working on the BARM government. And he was telling me, napa, sabi ko, you said, so what happened to, because, like, for a year, that was all I was doing. Like, on top of everything I did, I was on top of the ARM portfolio. Pero sabi niya, Joe, what we dreamed of, At that time, it was a good dream. But now, it was in the hands of the BARM. And yung BARM now had a mixed government. Now, there were idealistic young people, but you still had the old ones. So now, there's a tension of what's going to happen with the experiment that is ARMM. So up to now, we don't see the gains that we wanted. Because that there were, I think it was 5.6 billion that was poured in for that year alone to jumpstart ARM. We imposed a regional government there, but we don't really know if it works. Because the... It appears like the in terms of oh, in terms of the numbers, it's, it's, we're not, still not sure. The second one was the informal settlers. We were so proud of that because I mean, Sila Huge and Sila Luis, those who weren't done it and would know. And that was the promise of that administration, the in-house, on-site, in-city, and like that was a 
also I think a revolutionary thing because every time the policy of the national government was to send out informal settlers back to the provinces, but that never worked because it's too expensive to have them on site in city because their lands are so expensive. So the Aquino government really poured in money to make that work. There are communities that work, like even after I've been in contact with some of the urban poor leaders, they were saying, yeah, ito yung inaayos natin, itong isyero na to, okay na, may mga bahay na. Pero in terms of the bigger number of whether or not we solve the informal settlers problem, parang kulang pa. So that's, kaya yeah, parang for me, okay, best effort, pero parang hindi ko sure if it really achieved what we wanted. And lastly, as an additional point, parang there were a lot of things when we were in JLG na, we were just traveling all the time. Pag may bagyo, pag may calamity, we were there. I didn't see the point actually. Because like, hindi ka naman mayor eh, hindi ka naman governor, why should you go there? Pero nakita ko lang yung point niya. I was in Pantukan, Davao del Norte, January. For my firm, I gave a talk on small scale mining. And then one of the, one of the participants there approached me. And then gulit ako, sabi niya, man, naalala kita, ikaw yung kasama ni Sir Jesse dito, nung nagka-landslide sa Pantukan, kayo yung nagpunta. And ako, actually, yung Pantuan landslide, parang wala nangyari doon. Kasi hindi naman ang stop yung small scale miners. In fact, the reason I was there last than why was to give a talk on small scale miners. Pero parang for me, the added value of what I got from what she was saying was it was the first time we saw a national government figure go there. Like, nalala ko, we had to chopper from Davao to Pantuan with the ESP chopper na di mo alam po okay pa siya or whatever. Pero that was the, the, the media policy side. Pero parang sometimes people, even parang national government seem so far away from them. And when they see a, a national figure come them, talk to them, dialogue with them, even if what might have been suggested didn't really happen, but they remember the idea that someone hmm. was there and prepared them. Uh, you know, for, for me, um, marami rin... Parang I particularly remember there was this one day na parang sobrang happy ko kasi parang ang daming ang daming mga positive news that that week early on on our time parang nag-file ng tax evasion case yung BIR against this popular person mayroong na-convict tapos we were holding this big conference on uh, public-private partnerships but but I guess parang overall parang Ang nakaka proud lang talaga nun was there was really a strong feeling of of hope and and opportunity and promise na parang ang daming possible and kaya minsan napapaisip ka parang ang ang bilis din mag-turn ng 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 sentiment or or I guess siguro a lot of people take for granted then very basic things na akala hindi mawawala pero I guess we can see now na parang hindi hindi laging nandoon yung mga yung mga maliliit na bagay. And, and I'm not saying na perfect yung trabaho namin natin pero siguro marami rin actually ngayon parang na wala na ako sa DOF looking at the DOF news. Parang a lot of what they're saying sounds familiar to what we used to say before. But I guess ngayon ngayon na uh, much older much wiser parang nakita ko rin na there's some things na we em- probably emphasized too much before na mm-hmm. now that I'm outside might have sounded a bit tone deaf um so I guess may may it was good na I mean personally parang it's good to get both perspectives and nakita ko rin naman na well during that time and dami rin talagang nangyari yung scale nung problem ng Pilipinas really requires a lot lot more and and uh, for me parang na, sometimes ako walang gana sometimes ako excited na parang i remember the feeling of trying to solve problems when i was in government and minsan hinahanap mo rin na parang pwede ba ganun din ka importante or kahalaga yung problem na inaayos mo. Kasi minsan, pag nasa company ka na, minsan isipin mo, lang yun, pinagpapupuyata ko to wala na yung mangyayari bukas, lit-lit na bagay. <laughs> pa- paano gano'n? But, uh, yun, useful din naman to, to, to see things from, a, from the opposite side. 
I remember back in college, my history professor told us that you don't have any right to complain about the state of our country if you yourself haven't registered to vote. And then he actually required us to get our cedula. His point being, <laughs> you have to do your part in nation building. Then I share this because in recent times, I mean, you guys have done your part. And then even if, when we think we've done our part, it seems we've reached new levels of uh, indecency, I guess. So with all that's happening in our country, ito na yung last question ko. How does one <laughs> not lose hope? Hirap niyan eh. How does one, sorry, di ko yun, like, how does one? How does one not lose hope? Not, akala ko, how does one lose hope? Dagi <laughs> lang, nagka lang ng news every day. <laughs> Facebook ka lang. Long silence. <laughs> Actually, yun yung pinakamirap question ng page mo. Kasi, no, may message mo yan, yun yung nakala kong tanong. Kasi, like, parang sabi ko, at this point, if I were to answer you honestly, like, I, I feel like I'd do, I'd do, like, paano mo tagal doon? Nawalan ako ng, mm. ng hope. Yung, yung, naalala ko lang, when, parang yung pinag-isipan, yun lang yung reflection point ko from the questions you sent. But like, I remember in college, I was, my course was development studies. Mm. I mean, I took it because I told someone, Masabi ko, he was asking me, what do you, what do you want to do? What, what, what work are you applying for in college? Sabi ko, I want to change the world. What course should I take? Sabi niya, I'll take development studies. You will be guided there. So, ako, I have no idea kung abin natin yung brochure. Just made it my first choice. Sabi ko na ako ugali eh. Like, oh, yeah, sige, sabi mo, and I trust this person. So, that was my first choice. No, no, having no idea of what it was. And that was my framework, and I met so many good friends in my blog. And the whole four years was like about, uh, you know, fighting for that framework, changing the world. And there was this one story, na, the reason I say it, is because that was what I've been thinking about since entering and leaving government. See, Bobby Gev is a famous professor in college. Mm -hmm. And I, I translate this very loosely, because the story niya. Parang may rin daw tao, may, so may waterfall, may tao, ginagawa niya, nagtatapon siya ng baby. So parang absurd story, pero siya natapon lang niya. Ang parang ni Bobby Kev, so kung ikaw, so anong gagawin mo? Pipigilin mo ba yung tumatalon? Yung pipigilin mo yung nagtatapon ng bata o sasaluhin mo isa-isa? And I think the premise of his question was, are you going to choose to change the system or choose yung isa-isa? And when I entered the government, my framework was, again, yung, yung story na yun was very simplistic. Nakikipag-argue nga ako kay Bobby Gev after nato. Pero, <laughs> I ended government thinking na, ah, yeah, I wanted to change the system. We do the policies, we do the big things. Pero at the end of the day, like, as I said kanina, like, if you give me, if I give myself a grade, it was a C. I mean, there was, there's a lot to be done. And I left. And now, after leaving, I, honestly, even if it was his administration, I might want to choose to go back. But in a different capacity, because I entered government not 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 as a lawyer, mm. but as a lawyer, knowing that there are a lot of inmates inside jails, for example, na kailangan naman abogado to file a motion for them and mali dismiss the case and they could be released. And kaya relevant yung story na yon, kasi now I'm attracted to the idea of being that person na yung isa isang tingi-tinging story ah. So, ano yung magawa mo? Gawin mo na lang. Kasi, I don't see myself doing the policy thing right now. Pero, I, in my heart, I know na I can't just not do anything given the skills that we have, given all the privileges that we have. And that for me is the answer to if I'm still hoping. I am still hoping because I still want to fight. But how I'm going to fight, that's and I'm sure that's a question mark because of all the political thing or political background, political context that's happening. But yeah, if, if I were offered a job, for example, in the public attorney's office or there's an opening there, I might leave my private law firm job and just go, go there. Ayan. I hear a tanong mo, Paige. Good question. How hard? 
in the question? How do you not lose hope? Yeah. Even and after so, serving in government. Yeah. And with all the shit that's happening right now. Hope. Oops. Yeah. Hindi ba ano PG thirteen ba tong ano mo R sixteen hindi. Walang walang rating. Walang ano, rating. Eh. Yung ibang yung ibang tao kasi baka iba yung mindset mindset or opinion nila about the things that are happening to us. Hmm. But like for me kasi parang is this really the Philippines that we want to live in? Parang, um, I don't think yung the passage of the anti-terror law or what else ko ba? Um, inuna, compared to addressing the real problem like the pandemic, etc. Also, parang after experiencing a lot of losses in parang Kumbaga, we've earned, we've earned so much. Um, or nung nagbangko na tayo ng changes mm-hmm. or in the past administration. And then it just took them a few months, a few years to undo everything. So, yeah. parang for me, <laughs> I'm hopeless. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so, I don't know. Sometimes iniisip ko, parang ako, eh, why do I care? Why should I care? Parang, sometimes I want to be selfish na parang, pakialam ko, parang, pakialam ko sa nangyayari, parang, they, parang you chose this. Example lang, if I have an, an office mate na they voted for this administration or etc. And then, hihingi ng gulong. Oh, sino yun? <laughs> Chat ko sa'yo. Anyway, or <laughs> hihingi ng tulong sa akin, or just a friend or a relative na parang but I need help because hindi ko hindi ko ma-process yung ganito sa ganitong agency. Then I tell them I don't work for the government anymore. Bo wala ka bang I mean wala ka bang mapuntahan or mahinga ng tulong sa sa agency na yan. And then parang sa akin sinisip ko that's what you get. <laughs> parang you deserve. <laughs> parang naman kumbaga minsan kasi or baka selfish lang or yung point of view ko is very personal kasi parang I've seen my friends and my office mates parang worked hard a lot or so much and sacrificed so much to do this parang changes and um, these things. But parang ang dali lang, ma, ang dali lang mawala because um, you people voted for these kind of leaders. So parang for me, minsan parang may tampo eh. Parang bala kayo dyan, magpapayaman na lang ako. <laughs> <laughs> parang ganun yung mindset. But then... But when I read the news naman, parang shit, hindi talaga pwedeng manahimik ka. Parang you have to speak up. Parang you have and still be hopeful na someday these all, all these things will change for the better. Na parang, I hope there will be someone, a leader na will prioritize the people instead of himself or the few people around him. So, I hope in the future, mas magiging positive pa yung outlook ko about the government and the Philippines. So, that's it. Sige, siguro. <laughs> Ako, siguro one, one thing I learned, uh, parang it's one frame awesome. that yeah, I found... Enough. One frame I found very useful when when I was uh, doing my MBA and then thinking of parang babalik ba ako sa Pilipinas uh, or uh, try ko naman tung ibang life yun nga, yung magpabayaman or mag, mag enjoy lang baga so so tinray ko yun ang masakla parang hindi ako naging masaya <laughs> and uh, uh, I guess parang it's not so much finding hope and parang seeing light at the end but it's more about um uh parang realizing na there's always a problem that needs to be solved mm-hmm. and if you have the luxury of time and and, and talent to be a part of that. Parang just being part of that fight already gives you energy. Mm-hmm. Kahit na parang hindi mo alam pa paano mananalo to sa dulo, 
parang I would rather spend my time rather than sleepless nights trying to solve a problem that was important to me than than a problem that was that's easy to win but at the end parang ano ba naman yung ano ba naman kwenta nito sa <laughs> sa kinahaba-haba ng ng panahon so so for me parang do i f- do I feel hopeful about what's going to happen in the next few years? Not really. But I find energy in trying to break that expectation. Mm. Na hindi, hindi pwede mangyari yung feeling ko mangyayari. And what's a better way of, diba, of draining myself than in trying to break that expectation? So So for me, as much I've been trying to avoid being engaged in government or being engaged in politics since 2016. Pero every time may invitation, parang I'd really find a way to parang jujitsu my schedule and find a deal with my boss na parang I'll do the work pero tutulong din ako dito. Kasi parang papano kahihindi kung, kung tingin mo meron kang maiaambag. Kahit na parang hindi baka hindi manalo <laughs> parang ganun so but, uh, yun eh yun lang yung kontrolado mo kung ano yung mangyayari sa trabaho mo hindi mo naman alam pero mahalaga yung parang for me important na masabi ko sa sarili ko na na lumaban ako and for me parang hindi naman there's no such thing as kumuta na ako parang nakikita na din yun na De, this this thing kung mahalaga sa atin yung Pilipinas kung sila na natin makita kung masensa yung mga Pilipino hindi siya natatapos sa ano sa isang bagay kasi maraming maraming may gusto na hindi mangyari yung dapat mangyari so yun so for me that's that's where i draw my energy in in mm-hmm. seeing uh, the same people parang giving it their all even if parang <laughs> ewan kung anong kung anong mangyayari. <laughs> and and yun yung masaya, di ba? Parang for me, at least masaya siya. At least parang matutulog ka na okay, meaningful yung ginawa ko today. Uh, your question so hard, especially cause I have a lot of like friends who've started families na and because of the past few events like ABS, anti-terror, this whole dealing with this pandemic, like non-stop, hindi naman non-stop, but like pretty often they're like, oh, should I look for a job in Canada? Should I move to Australia? And things like this, I, and I don't know why, and I wish it didn't, but they kind of trigger me because I can't get myself to to say things like that. and. And sometimes I wish na wala na akong hope sa Pilipinas. But I don't know why there's something deep down that's still like pulling me or wanting me to hope for a better future for everyone. I mean, it's so easy to say these things. And who knows, maybe not in our lifetime that these things will happen. Because I really think like the Filipino people deserve better. We're not, we're not a shit people, really. And, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe hope, hope's a big word and it's easy to throw around. So, maybe that's what I have. It's this want or longing for something better. And I also feel that if we, and maybe this comes from a place of privilege and I acknowledge my privilege, that if, if we just leave or entertain the idea of turning our backs on the Philippines and who's gonna work Mm. or who's gonna give that effort to make sure we get one step closer to that better Philippines and right now like what John said like I don't know what it means for me to do right now like I don't see myself working in government anytime soon or lending we don't know who's running we I don't know but like for me the most I can do now is 
take care of my sphere of influence. So like I have a few um, businesses. So for me, it's taking care of my staff and something that small. Like if I decide to turn my back on the Philippines, then they'll lose their jobs and how about their family? I mean, things like that always linger in the back of my mind. And that's why maybe that's where I get the hope for the Philippines is that these are good people who work for me and with me and they deserve better than what we have now so that's why i maybe that's why i'm hanging on to something or hoping for something better for everyone i actually agree with p i i i talk to jack sometimes so we there, there are times that we are actually about to give up with in, in, in this country. So, you know, why, why don't we just migrate? You know, we can go to Canada. It's, it seems to be like, the, or anywhere else, New Zealand, or yeah, anywhere but the Philippines, right? But for some reason, I agree with PA. They, parang, ano, alam mo, you entertain the thought. You entertain the thought of leaving. But deep down inside you, parang, there's something holding you. Eh? I, I, I can't explain it as well. Maybe hope? Probably. But uh, to answer your question, Paige, what, what, how do we hope? Ano, ano how mo? does one not lose hope? How does one not lose hope? Okay, how does one not lose hope? I, I've been thinking about that uh, question. I, I, after 2016, and after everything, the shit show, the, the, it has all been downhill, right? After 2016, and, and I, I, I think I share the sentiments of everyone in this uh in this group in this room that uh it 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 was so frustrating all the things that you worked hard for down the drain all the reforms that you initiated change so right and what's a what's a use right so i became so disillusioned and in fact i'm i i keep telling my myself and my friends and even my students and even jack i i won't go back to government anymore. but that doesn't mean i'm not hopeful doesn't mean that I've lose, lost hope. Uh, as I said, I, I, I've already reconciled myself with the idea that you don't have to be in government mm -hmm. just to be able to contribute to our country and just to be able to help our society. So that's, that's one. That's one. But what, what's, what was very telling for me, and just when I was about to give up hope, uh, I, I, someone told me about this Oscar Romero prayer. Are you familiar with that? No? no, you don't know the Oscar Romero prayer. It's, it's no, a really nice it. prayer. It's a really nice prayer. Uh, but I'm sure you've heard prophets of a future not our own. No, it's a, it's a really good prayer. I'll just uh, look it up. No, but it's a really nice prayer because it contextualizes everything that we've discussed earlier about uh, about wanting to change everything. When we can't, we, we can't change everything, not in our lifetime. And we cannot, we have to stop expecting that. And when I realized that after hearing this prayer, it 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 kind of made it kind of made sense for me. Because you can't you can't you can't figure out everything. You can't solve everything. You can't solve everything in this lifetime. We we just have to do our part. We just have to plant good things, and that should be enough. And for me, that's something hopeful already. Mm -hmm. uh, you look to the future by doing something good today. So that's what's keeping me hopeful. And also this line. This is a very powerful prayer. I, I suggest you guys look this up. Uh, I'll, I'll just read the end part. Uh, we may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders. Ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future, not our own. So everything that we're doing now is for a future, not our own. So it's for someone else's future. And our role now here at this time, at this place, in this universe, in this tiny blue dot, we yeah, just have to do our part. And after that, that's when I realized, all right. So we don't have to go on and around town solving everything, solving every problem, solving every issue. You just have to contribute. 
whatever way we can, something good. Just plant something good. Kaya nga tama si Bebe na nung una hindi ko pa nag-gets eh. Just to share with you guys. And, and Twitter. And Twitter bodies kami ni Bebe. <laughs> Mga awayero at awayera kami. Mayroong ano eh, mayroong shinere si Aika na yung Virgo, Libra, Aries. So may yung yung sa Virgo, na, nagdidilig. Di ba? Nagdidilig ng plants. Nung una, di ko pa guess pa. Paano naging Virgo to? <laughs> well, actually, it actually made sense because you're you're actually planting seeds now. So, we we won't get to sow it. Mm-hmm. We won't get to reap the harvest, reap the fruits. Someone else will, but you still plant the seeds. So I guess in our respective ways, now we we do that. Ako, ano na eh, I've I've already reached that point where I just strike everywhere and anywhere, <laughs> whenever, wherever I'm drawn to help. Okay, okay. Uh, anti-terror petitions. Okay, sure. Okay, uh, teach. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, gawa ng mga policy notes. So, oh, sige, sure, okay. O, policy advice. Okay. Because you can't, ano eh, you can't, you can't, you can't keep on planning everything based on one singular idea that you have to change everything. You really cannot. And just to end, I, I, I'm turning 40 this year. So, I... 40. I, 40, 40. Zero. Yung last year... 40 ka nga. And, and yung last year kasi para Chinese pa mahiin na dapat agapan mo. Fake 40. Fake 40. <laughs> but exactly. Huwag na nag-advance ce- celebration ka. <laughs> exactly. So that, that was actually <laughs> the purpose for that. Oh, it's, a, it's a Chinese, ano, it's really a Chinese belief that kailangan mo i, ano, i-preempt para you'll cross it anyway. But, but I realized, I'm turning 40 this year, the average lifespan is 65, right? Mm. Right? Ba humaba na? Mm. Humaba na ba? Oh, assuming na 70 I'm movies. sure it's more than 65. Uh, let's, let's assume 65, 70. Okay. So 70, sige, 70. 30. I'm 40. I only have 30 more years to go. And I realized, just last week, just last week, I'm already on my way back. Mm. You, you, you follow? I'm already on my way back, so I, I, it got me thinking. Wow, what, 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 what will I be leaving behind? What will, and that actually gave me hope, because I'm now in that mode where I would now start planting the things that I would leave behind once I pass from this life. So, Aww. Yeah. So that gives me hope. That that even if it gets so fucking frustrating. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah sorry, you go ahead. Yeah, 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 that's it, that's it. Thanks so much, guys, for this very colorful conversation. You know, you guys and other people I know who worked for or are working for government are really the reason why I always think twice in moments when it's so easy to criticize those in government because I know that for every corrupt politician there is, there still are, you know, those silent workers just like you who bring dignity to public service. Just. So thank you again for your char. time. Char. 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 Oh, well, you know, guys, I would I would still encourage people to work in government. Just yes, to... and they, they, they really have to and to experience things. It's fun. Yeah. You will learn a lot. It's fulfilling. It's tiring. What are you going to do? Especially the people who have a lot of opinions in life. Okay, I'm going to work as a lawyer. I'm going to work as a lawyer. I'm perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Paige. But uh, thank you very much for having us. It's uh, this is actually a good opportunity to recount all these things and to be reminded yeah. of once, uh, once upon a time. Yeah, <laughs> and a good opportunity to say hi to your fans. So if may shout out ka dyan, go lang yun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so mga Nasa fans, Netflix ba yung movie mo yun? Oh, oh yeah. no, no. yeah, it's ah, there. I, Netflix. <laughs> hindi ko alam Remote kung tinanggal na. <laughs> Hindi ko alam kung tinanggal na dahil wala na star scene yung mayata. Nasa I want TV yun. 
Well, oh, just stop recording for we can we can mm. still keep after us. So yeah. yeah. Thank uh, you again. Thank you, right, thank you, you. Thank, thank you. you.